Good morning. Good morning. I'm so grateful to be here today. I appreciate Chaplain Wickham for inviting me to share God's word with you. Um, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter where we worship, right? Amen. So, um, in fact, I feel very comfortable because we got a chance to serve God together as we sang songs and hymns on the Christmas cantata. So, really appreciate this church uh, worshiping with us together and participating with that. Um, so, I'm glad another opportunity to be with you all and um, to lift up the Lord today. Will you please pray with me? Dear God Almighty, I thank you so much for this day. I appreciate you allowing me an opportunity to just uh, share your word, Lord. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable to you, my Lord, my Redeemer. I pray that these words will continue to give us hope, strength, and encouragement along the way. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. title of this message is Building a Thankful Heart. Well, before I start, I'd like to say Happy New Year's. I mean, even though it's a week or so, but Happy New Year to you all. Um, actually, um, when the New Year's began, and we, we normally talk about what new things we want to do, new ways we want to live, or what we want to improve, and we make, maybe some of us make a New Year's resolution. Well, on New Year's Day, um, I met a person at Girl Scout Beach. And this person was collecting some special rocks to make some cool dishes and crafts. And not long after us talking, we start talking about the goodness of God. I mean, it's really hard to look at those beautiful oceans and beaches and not see the goodness of God, amen? So um, as we start talking about the goodness of God, I had shared with her that on my run, and again, this is on New Year's Day, on that day, I just started to say all the things I'm thankful for. And I came up with like 130 things that I was thankful for God, for what he did just over that previous year. And I was pretty happy, but I'll be honest, I was trying to get to 365 days, right? Uh, for each day, but I didn't get there. So, but 130 was good. But when she responded, she said, um, well, you know what I do? And she outdid me. She said, every single morning, she writes 10 things that she is thankful for to God. Every morning. So just imagine that I did it 130 at the end of the year, right? And she does... 10 every single morning, that was thousands more than I did. And I thought to myself, wow, how good, how, how positive, what effect that would have on a person when they start their morning off with what they're thankful for what God has done. How it is before she goes off to work, before she sees other people, before she goes on her way, she's already lifted and encouraged and confident of what God has already done. And so when you look ahead at what, what you got to face, well, you already know what God's already done, right? So this morning as I began to, you know, look at the text and where text is in 107, I'd like to challenge us. Challenge us to consider that, you know, a lot of times we might wake up thinking, if you're like me, what it is I need to do, which sometimes brings anxiety. But instead, we can think of what God has already done, which for me always brings me peace. So this new year, please join me in taking a challenge. Starting the day with what we are thankful for Focusing our minds on what God has done in the past so that we can have hope for what God will do in the future. So again, as I said, this psalmist in 107, Psalm 107, I, I'm not going to read the whole thing in text. I'm going to just go through parts of it. But if you have your scriptures, if you can turn to Psalm 107, we'll reflect on parts of it. It begins, oh, give thanks. And that, oh, that's an, 
emphasis and intensity. It's a plea. It's a demand. Oh, give thanks. This word thanks in Hebrew is yada. Its meaning gives thanks, give praise, give confession, confess something about the goodness of God. See, there's other words in the Bible used in thanks, thanks in that like in the New Testament, this word is stated over 70 times and it's be thankful, be grateful. Even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said thanks to his Father over and over again. For example, he said, Heavenly Father, thank you for the food as he parted the bread and was about to serve the thousands of people. Jesus again, Father, he said, thank you for hearing my prayer as he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. So if the scripture repeatedly says give thanks to God, and our Savior Jesus Christ gave thanks to our Heavenly Father, then surely it's important for us to give thanks regardless of what we're seeing, regardless of what we go. See, God is always good. His essence is good. His nature is good. And His actions are eternally good. Y'all, God is always good. I know that sometimes bad things seem to happen to good, thing, good people, but still, I believe that this psalm is written so that we can remember that God still is good. But that's why I believe, again, as we look back, um, the psalm is going to remind us to go back and see what God has done. Even in the midst of 2020, God brought us through. So in this new year, we can go forward. No matter what we face in 2021 with the COVID, the crazy politics, and just daily challenges, this psalm teaches us to thank God and to confidently say that God is still good. Amen? This psalm was written after God's people returned from captivity or 70 years of captivity. They were dispersed from the promised land. They were exiled in Babylon because of their sins. God allowed their enemies to capture them. For that time period, they were slaves. They were prisoners. They were foreigners. They were scattered, so they were weakened. They weren't together. However, over a period of time, God, full of mercy, brought them back together in their promised land. That's why the psalmist in the first several verses say, <clears throat> give thanks. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell the story, verse 2. Verse 3, those who he gathered from the lands, from the east, from the west, from the north and the south, who he brought back to the promised land. I love how the psalmist says, let them tell their stories. Confess what God has done and give thanks and praise to our God. Let them let everyone know that no matter what, God, remains to be good. Can you imagine the impact we can have when we tell our testimonies? Can you imagine the positivity full of our thankfulness and our praise, how it would affect our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our fellow guards, fellow people that we, so, we are um, in the military with? That is why it's let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Even as I think about that first day of the year with my rock collecting friend, you know, just as one of us started talking about the goodness of God, it was easy for the next, it spread. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That's a good thing to spread, right? So let's look at our first point. Our first point um, in the text, it, it starts at verse four. Verse four in Psalm 107, it says, some of the redeemed had wandered into the desert, into the wasteland. They couldn't find their way to the city or town. They were hungry and thirsty. Their lives were slipping away. So they cried out to the Lord in their distress, and God delivered them from their desperate circumstances. God led them straight to human habitation. Let them thank the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all people, because God satisfied the one 
who was parched with thirst, and he filled up the hungry with good things. See, this story is about those who were lost, but now they're found. See, God's people wandered around looking for fulfillment, a place where their needs were not were to be met, yet they found a desert, an empty space, a place where they were starving for something more, thirsting for something more, longing for a place where they can call home, but they found none. It says that they cannot get settled. It's like some of us where we were restless. We, we couldn't find comfort. Maybe last year, some of us may have been where we were looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for a career, looking for purpose everywhere. And we went and found ourselves still hungry and thirsty and uncomfortable. The place has left a hole and we knew something was missing. We felt like our lives were just wasting away. But when the psalmist says that they cried out to God and he delivered them from the desert to a place of pools and rivers, that shows that God led them to a place of satisfaction. Some of us can testify we have been in a place where we were miserable and we complained over and over again of who we were with and what we had to do. But once we cried out to our Lord, God heard us. And God delivered us from a life of empty relationships or dead-end jobs. We had felt the loss, but God removed us from the deserted places and put us on straight paths of success. Now we feel fulfilled and satisfied. Now we are in a place where we feel complete and whole. Like a hand perfectly fitting a glove is our life in the hand of our Lord. For our deepest needs are met when we give our lives over to God. So we thank God that once we were lost, but now we are found. We have found our purpose, our fulfillment, and our love. Point two. The psalmist gives us another story here. Where in, they were somewhere in darkness, but now they're in God's marvelous light. Starting in verse 10, it says, Some of the redeemed had been sitting in darkness and deep gloom. They were prisoners suffering in chains because they had disobeyed God's instructions and rejected the Most High's plans. So God humbled them with hard work. They stumbled and there was no one to help them. So they cried out to the Lord in their distress. And God saved them from their desperate circumstances. God brought them out from the darkness and deep gloom, and he shattered their chains. Let them thank the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all people, because God has shattered the bronze doors and split iron bars in two. See, some of, some of them were in dark places, places of regret and shame and of remorse. They were in prison because of the sins they had committed. And I don't know about you if you've ever sinned over and over again, like had a, an addiction of something that you didn't want to do, but you kept doing it. You felt like a prisoner and you couldn't break free. But like, you know, it's kind of like in Romans chapter 7 where the Apostle Paul talks about how powerful sin is. It entangles us, right? And he said, we ask ourselves, why do we do the things we don't want to do and the very things we should do and we want to do, we keep doing. And it's all because sin holds us like a prisoner. And in this text, the prisoners sit in the darkness, which is the shame and guilt that we feel afterwards. So how did they break free? They did it by simply crying, deeply crying out to God for help and for forgiveness. And God did it. And God does the same thing for us, folks, for God hears our cries, our repentance, our conviction. He sees when we're truly sorry. And God faithfully fulfills his promise that if God's people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, he 
will hear our cries from heaven and heal our very land. God says if we confess our sins, Jesus, our faith is faithful and willing to forgive us and cleanse us from all our, un all our stuff, all the things that we have committed. This is what we can do even today, y'all, even this year. Even though the enemy lies to us and tells us and tries to make us think we've done too much, we've, we're un, we've made an unpardonable sin, we're unforgivable, we've gone too far, God's love has no boundaries. We, wherever we are, no matter what we have done, when we cry out to God for forgiveness, God will forgive us and remove us from the darkness of guilt and shame and break the strongholds of sin and any addiction. So those of us who know that God has forgiven us and, and, and know that God's love is greater than our sins, those of us who now know how high and how wide and how deep God's love is for us, let us give thanks this year because his love covers a multitude of sins. Amen? Our point three, it says the next reason to give thanks this year is because we were sick, but now we're healed. And due to time, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to read verse 17 through 22, but I do encourage you to read it for yourself. And it's like this. Here, it's like the psalmist was looking out and saying, okay, I still got some of you who can't relate. They still don't understand why they need to still give thanks. So we need to include in our New Year's resolution making a daily list of what we're thankful for. But we're still questioning. Uh. So here goes the psalmist. He says, on the topic of health, it's like some of you and I were, were sick, nearing death's door couldn't eat and I'd imagine couldn't sleep because the pain and the sickness they experienced. The doctors couldn't heal them and the medicine couldn't cure them and nothing was changing them. They felt terrible and no remedy was out there. It was like months ago with COVID when there was no vaccine that had been approved. But God, our great physician, knew just what they needed and what we needed to be healed. So when they cried out to the Lord, when they turned their, in their beds looking at the wall like King Hezekiah and said, please, God, don't let me die, God heard their cry and gave them more years to live. Those of us who have been sick, that we know that only God could have healed us, those of us who know what it's like to feel like we're about to die of something of an illness, let us remember that there is nothing impossible for God. He's still working miracles, and therefore we can give thanks for healing us. However, I want to remind us that God does not just heal our physical bodies, but he also heals our minds. This could be those of us who thought about or attempted suicide. Those of us who felt beyond depressed, beyond hope, those of us who, in verse 18 of this text says, was at death's door. Maybe you even knocked on it, but praise God, it didn't open. Since then, God has mentally and emotionally healed you. You may at one time felt like the grave was the only place to be, but now God, the Lord, has snatched you from that pit and kept you breathing. God showed you that his plans for you and his purpose for you, for your life was for good and not for evil to actually give you a future and a hope. And now many of you are living in that future <laughs> and you're experiencing that new life that you could not have imagined before. That's why we should give thanks and sing joyfully to the Lord. God brought us into a new life, a new beginning, and God raised us up again. So to those of you, or those of us who were sick 
and are now healed. Let us give thanks. Let us sing the songs of joy before the new year ends. Finally, the psalmist says, get thanks because we were weak, but now we're strong. When you um, have time, if you can read verse 23 through 32, but this is the last story. And he says, look, some of you were on the sea in ships. You were working on the waters. Sound familiar? Then you, they were hit with a terrible storm and, and that rocked their boat. The winds were so strong that these brave and experienced sailors lost all their courage, lost all their bearings. They were rocking so much that they looked like they were drunk men. They were going back and forth, back and forth. They were unstable in all their ways, couldn't decide what to do. They felt out of control, and they were scared. And like some of us who have been in the military for years, when you see some newbies, you might roll your eyes. You may think, poor little things, poor new cadet or private or whatever. You are so experienced that you can do your mission almost with your eyes closed. I mean, your rank, your deployments, your resume draws people to you for help. But like these mature and professional sailors in the text, some of us have faced times when all our knowledge, all our skills, all our resources and experience couldn't fix the situation and couldn't solve our problems. We were in such dire straits that we realized that for the first time in a long time, we needed help. And it's hard to ask for help when you're always the one giving the help. But like these sailors, if we remember when we humbled ourselves and we cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, I need you this time, we see that he rescued us. And that's what we learned. We learned that we're not as strong as we thought we were, <laughs> that our weaknesses, Lord, at times seem overwhelming, but you, God, are our strength. See, our trouble and our trial taught us that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, not so much in our own human strength. That's why we give thanks, because God quieted the storms in our life. God made peace be still. Our situation demonstrated that God, who created all things, is able to bring chaos into order. God is able to change our confusion into clarity. And when we feel overwhelmed, God is strong enough to overcome every wind that comes against us. That's what makes us strong when we are in our own might and we feel weak. See, that's why the psalmist says in 32, exalt and lift up God's name in assembly. Praise him in the sanctuary because the Lord, he is good. So as I close, listen, I, I know that in light of last week's event at the Capitol, this sermon may seem out of context. But the scripture says, give thanks always. See, the psalmist said it, in the midst of captivity, the apostle Paul said it while he was in prison. The believers said it while in persecution. And Christ said it while he broke bread, knowing that he was headed for the cross. See, no matter what 2021 may be, if your mind is looking at what God has done in the past, you can definitely overcome what may happen in our future. When our mind remembers what the Lord did yesterday, then we will have confidence of what God can do today. See, our mind is the battlefield. So when we concentrate on what God is doing, the enemy can't tell us what God can't and won't do. So I encourage you to list those 10 things out in the morning of what you're thankful for. That's a way of putting on your full armor of God before the enemy attacks. 
This year, don't be caught off guard. Don't get discouraged. Just say, thank you, Lord, because I know that no matter how lost this world may seem, you can find them. Thank you, Lord, because I know no matter how dark times may be, you can brighten it. Thank you, Lord, because no matter how sick people may get, you are still able to heal them. And thank you, Lord, because no matter how weak we may feel, you are still able to strengthen us. God, we thank you. We give thanks that no matter what, we will still praise you. No matter the times, we'll still give you glory. Lord, we will continue to shout hallelujah, regardless of what this year may bring. Because no matter what, nothing, just like 2020, did not stop God. 2021 will not stop God's goodness either. May God bless you and may God keep you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. I thank you for these people here and just opening up their doors and allowing me to come speak to them. But Lord, I pray that the words that were spoken will fall on good ground, that the seed will not only produce 10, but 20 and 100 fold, that we would walk out of here with confidence that you who began a good work will continue that work in Christ Jesus, regardless of what happens around us. For Lord, nothing stops you, not even the grave. So therefore, we know that we can walk out of here brave, confident, courageous, and ready to weather whatever storm that may happen. Help us have a thankful heart. Help us to be able to see your hand in our life that every morning we wake up saying thank you, Lord, not just for a new day, but all the things you did yesterday so I know what you can do, whatever is coming up in our future. Lord, I thank you again. I pray blessings on these families, and I thank you again for just allowing me to be used by you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.